Hey guys, in this video I'll teach you how to fold T-Rex designed by Justin Hairgrove. The paper I'll be using today is regular origami paper, also known as Kami. This one is 24 centimeters, that's around 9 inches, but you can use any sort of paper you like. Printing paper will work just fine. Let's start folding. First step is to make a bird base. I'll show you a way to do it which is different from the traditional method and it makes collapsing way easier. First step is to turn the paper on the colored side. We'll fold the diagonals in both directions. <laughs> like this. And now let's do it in the other direction. Now we'll go to the white side of the paper and fold horizontal and vertical symmetry line. And now we'll make an angular bisector of this angle over here. All that means is just bring this edge to the diagonal crease. Now we don't want to fold all the way to the end. We want to stop as soon as we hit this point, which is the intersection of the crease we're just making and this symmetry line. Unfold and we'll do the same thing on the right. Again, stopping as soon as we the intersection. Now we'll repeat the same steps on the remaining three sides. Now we can start collapsing. The way we'll do that is by folding the paper down like this. We'll fold this corner up to here. We'll turn the paper around and do the same thing. And now we want to look from the bottom and look for the middle. You'll find a pocket over here. We want to open it up and flatten the paper. This shape is also known as a square base or preliminary base. Now we'll grab one of the layers and bring it up. We want to imagine that there is a line going from this point to this one over here. And as we do that, we are bringing in the edges. This is called a pedal fold. The important thing to note is that we are using all the creases we already have. And now we'll just bring this up, creating a new crease at the back over here, and now we'll bring it down. And now let's repeat the same steps on the other side. Now fold one of the layers to the right. Turn the paper around and do the same thing. Now I'll bring this bottom flap all the way up as far as it goes, like this. And now I'll fold it down again. The purpose of this is to get this line. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then fold it down. Now we want to look at this part of the model. You'll grab one of the flaps, which is this one in the middle. Work your way up to the middle, the intersection over here. And now we want to pivot our flap around this point. Like this. And we want to stop as soon as this point hits this edge. So right here. Now make sure that the creases go all the way to the end over here. As soon as that happens, you can flatten the paper. Now I'll grab those two flaps and just fold them back like this. And we want to make a line that starts right here. And this tip is supposed to touch this corner over here. Like this. Now using this new fold, we'll make a reverse fold. And the way you do that is by finding a middle over here. So you'll have two flaps 
two layers on each side. And we'll make mountain folds along the new creases and the valley fold in the middle. Like that. Now I want to rotate our models so that this shorter tip is on the left over here and on the bottom. We want to grab this flap and fold it to the right. And we just want to bring it to the right like that. We don't want to open any of the layers over here. And now we want to grab this middle flap, work our way down. And it helps if you just place them on the table like this. So work your way all the way down. And now we want to fold this flap to the right as far as it goes. So it's somewhere around here when it comes to my model. And you want to flatten the paper in that section. So let me show you that once again. We are up here working our way down, all the way down, and I will just flatten the flap to the right. Now let's turn the paper around and do the same thing. In order to bring this right flap, you'll have to push the paper in like that, and now we can bring it to the left, like this, and now grabbing this flap, we want to flatten the model by folding it to the left. And at the same time, we want to flatten everything else. This is the tail of our dinosaur and those are the legs. Now let's work on the head. I'll turn the paper around, so make sure your model is oriented in this way. We'll start off by making a valley fold over here. And now we want to bring it up by making a perpendicular crease to this edge. All that means is that when you make a crease, you want this edge and the edge behind it to be aligned perfectly like that. Now, how far should you fold? The reference I like to use is fourth of this distance. Now, you can either mark the paper there, you can eyeball it, or you can even fold it. So let me show you how the folding way. I'll just bring this flap to here and make a little mark like that. And I'll do the same thing with this section. So this way I'll get one fourth. And now I'll use this as my reference. And this is the way how. I'll fold this down, and as I fold this up, I want my folds again at that pinch mark. Again, I have to align the edge and the edge behind it. And make a fold like this. Now we'll unfold that to the left. And we want to bring this edge to the one above it like that. We don't want to go all the way to the end, we just need this first little portion as soon as we hit this crease. And now we'll make a strange fold that is 22.5 degrees from this point. Now, how do you get 22.5 degrees? You'll get a line by making a parallel to this one over here. So I'm just aligning this line with the one I want to make and my crease should start right there. So that's something like... like that. I'll just eyeball it like this. So I have two mountain folds. I'll fold this to the left and I'll use my two mountain folds like this and I want to fold this whole thing down. And I want to fold it down and imagine that this edge is extending the invisible line that goes like that. So you don't want it to be like this, you want it to be like that. And then flatten the model completely. This is probably the hardest step we'll have to face when folding this model, but as soon as we get through this point, everything becomes way easier. So I'll unfold everything like that, and I want to open the paper from behind like this and I want to use the folds I already have. The folds on the right are directed in the right direction so what we want to do is reverse the direction of the creases on the left. We'll start off by making a mountain fold over here. So now you can see that here's a mountain fold, here's a mountain fold and here's a mountain fold so now let's make mountain folds on the left side as well.
No, you'll find by trying to do that, the paper will start collapsing automatically like that. And that is perfectly fine and it is what we're going for. I'll just make a mound fold like this over here and now try using my creases to flatten everything. And this is really our main objective here. Let me show you those folds once again. And from the top, it looks like that. And now we'll make a head. So now we'll make a perpendicular crease to this line. All that means is just folding it over and again, we want to align the edges like that. Now you should fold to somewhere around the middle of this triangle. We have a triangle over here and if you imagine that there was this line over here, you should fold just a tiny bit short of that. So somewhere around here. And now we'll open that up, open the paper from up here, and make a valley fold using the crease we've just created. And when you come to this point, you want to fold this tip up over here. And now flatten the model again. This is the lower jaw of our dinosaur, and now you can just bring it down by, well, pulling it down. <laughs> And now we'll finally finish folding the head. And you will do that by folding this down like this. What I'm going for is this little triangle over here. Preferably you want this length to be the same as this length over here. So it's somewhere around there. You want to make a fold all the way to the end. But crease very lightly when it comes to this section. You'll see why in a second. So now as I make this fold, I'm going to put my thumb over here, so all the way to the end. Remake that fold, but this time around I can make a sharp crease all the way to the end. And now I want to make a crease from this point up to here. Like that. And now we can just flatten everything. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. It's a lot easier this time because we can use this edge as a reference for our crease because we want our dinosaur to be symmetrical after all. Like that. Let's do the same thing now. Open this part up. And now make a crease from that point to the bottom corner over there. Perfect. And now we can play with proportions a little. So here are a couple of things you can do to the head. You can leave it the way it is, or perhaps you can bring the jaw a little down. The way you do that is just altering the proportions a little. So instead of folding all the way to the end over here, you can go a little short of that, and then fold it back again. The reason why I did that is by doing so, you can create this eye shape over here, but that is optional. Once you're satisfied with the head, we can start by making little arms over here, and the way you do them is just by folding all the way down like this and you can play around with proportions as well this looks good to me and I'll do the same thing on the other side awesome now let's do the legs we'll start off by folding one of the legs up and you want to start your fold right over here and again this is perpendicular I want to match this edge with the one behind it fold all the way through and now we want to make a mound fold along this one. But before doing that, I want to put my finger inside like that. And in order to make making mound fold a little easier, you can pivot that flap around this point and make it this way. Once you do that, we want to bring this flap down. So work your way all the way to this pivot point and we want to flatten it like this and aligning this edge with the one behind it. Like that. This way we ensure that all of the creases are based on multiples of 22.5 and that is a designing technique designer use to make this model. And now we'll make a fold starting right here and we want to make a triangle and those two sides are supposed to be the same. Make a sharp crease, we'll unfold that, and now do a couple of little tricky folds. Let's unfold this whole section of the leg. We're working on this part now. 
So just put my fingers right here and then work in this section. I want to make a mound fold starting right here, ending right there. Like this. And now I'll make a mound fold along this crease. Like that, and as you do that, we want to flatten that section. You'll get something like this. And now as we flatten everything, we want to fold this up. You'll find that it's very similar to just folding this whole part in half. You'll get this extra little fold right in there. If you did everything perfectly, it will end right there, but slight imperfections are fine, as long as on the outside you're getting this shape. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Bring that up. We want to get our fingers right in here and make a mountain along this one. Like that. Now working our way down, we want to flatten this section and we want to align this edge with the edge behind it. Now this time around it's a little easier because you can just align and match the legs together like that. Now we'll make our triangle fold unfold the leg and work on this upper layer. First step is to make a mountain fold starting right there, ending right there. So I want to bring those layers together so I can accurately do the fold like this. And now I'll make a mountain fold along this crease, this one and this one. Now using those creases I want to flatten the paper in that section and now flatten the whole leg. You'll see that there is this new little fold created right there, same way it got created on this side. To finish the legs, we want to bring this flap up like this. We want to get an isosceles triangle right here. The way you can also get that line is by imagining that there is line going down like this. So those two are supposed to be part of the same line. We want to make an outside reverse fold by opening this up, making valley folds along those new creases, like that, and now flattening the paper in that section. You want to bring this up, like this, and now folding it in half. You can leave the legs like that, or you can unfold this part, make a first reverse fold by making mound folds along the outside creases. Like that. And now making a mound fold in the middle and making valley folds along the inside creases like that. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. And finally, the last step is making little mound folds over here to make the legs a little more round. Like that. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. And you're practically done with them all. The only thing left to do is to make it stand. Now if you did everything correctly, it should stand just like that on its own. But if it doesn't, you should try adjusting the feet a little bit. So you might want to bring them down if it falls backwards or bring them forward if it falls forward like that. There we go. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. And another important thing is that your notification bell is turned on. This way you'll be notified when the new video comes out. With that being said, I'm Origami Sage. Happy folding and I'll see you next time.